we looked at the Word of God and saw what it has to say about baptism. And one of the things I told you close to the end of um, my message was that I was going to come back and talk to you a little more about the illustration that is within the act of baptism, what it illustrates. And so we'll go to Romans chapter 6, read verses 1 through 11. I want to share a message with you tonight that I've given the title, Consider This. Consider this. Romans 6, verse 1. It would probably be helpful if I turn there with you. I'm bad about that. All right, there we are. Verse 1 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon or consider yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter 6 is such an incredible chapter dealing with the reality of what has taken place when we have turned to the Lord Jesus Christ and called on him to save us. It deals with the reality that, that what was old is dead and gone. And there is a whole lot of new that has come. And it tells us some things about this and what this means for us. And the Apostle Paul several times, if you continue to read down through the uh, chapter of chapter 6, you will hear him making these statements again. Do you not know? We know. Reckon yourselves. Consider yourselves. The Apostle Paul is wanting the believers there to understand some spiritual truths about what has taken place when they got saved. You remember in Ephesians chapter 1 where the Apostle Paul prayed for believers. He was writing to the saints, the book starts out. And he talks about how he bowed his knees to the Father and he asked the Lord that he would give to them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ that the eyes of their hearts would be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of their calling and what is the, the uh, exceeding riches of his glory and uh, what is the uh, exceeding greatness of his power towards those who believe. What is the hope of their calling? What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? There it is. Say it right. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward those who believe? So these are believers who have already inherited everything in Christ. And now Paul is praying that their eyes would be open, that they would understand what has happened to them. Amen. Every single one of us are growing in our understanding of what has taken place when we got saved. And now listen, we walk by faith. We walk by what we're believing. So it is very, very, very important that we believe correctly. Amen? What we believe determines how we live. What we believe will determine how we behave. That's why Paul is saying things like, do you not know? Reckon yourselves. Consider yourselves. Hey, know this. 
right? Understand what has happened to you. Because what we believe about ourselves will be what we live out. So tonight, I want you to consider this. Consider this. That when Paul says in verse 4, we were buried with Christ through baptism into death, that just as, that means the same way Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a newness of life. I want you to consider this tonight. It uses in verse 11, it uses this word that I keep saying consider. Um, the New King James and the King James, verse 11 says reckon. Likewise also reckon, but it could be translated consider. Consider is a word that I'm more familiar with and understand, so I, I use it when I'm thinking of this. But this word reckon, it just simply means to consider the facts. Consider the facts, okay? This word deals with reality rather than su supposition or opinion, okay? So it is to consider the facts based upon the evidence that is being presented. Now, if you uh, looked up your bank account, okay, and it gave you a statement, this statement is accurate. This is what you depend upon to give you the facts about what's in the bank account, right? Okay? Now, if it says there's a million dollars in there, but you live like you've only got a thousand, you fooled yourself. You haven't considered the facts. I'm afraid that far too many Christians got a million dollars in the bank and are living like they only got a thousand. Do you follow? I'm afraid that we have not considered the facts that God has given us in this word about what is true about us. The Bible says that faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So tonight, I want you to throw out the opinions. I want you to throw out the feelings about who you think you are. And I want you to look at the facts of God's Word and consider the facts. You say, well, I don't, I don't feel like the old man's dead. It's not about what you feel. It's about faith. See, faith is our reality. You may not have seen it manifesting or coming out outwardly in your life yet, but it never will until you consider it to be true, until you receive it by faith. Amen. Uh, we need to stop trying to overcome sin and believe that he already has. Right? That's where we're getting hung up. We're not considering the facts. We're trying to do something he's already done. And we have to receive by faith, through, through believing rightly, through considering ourselves. And what this is all about in Romans chapter 6, what it, what it really is, is referring to is that we should consider ourselves, he says in verse 11, to be dead. Indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. I want to show you one, two, three, four, five ways that the Bible speaks of us having died and then living again. Okay? Number one is going to be we're dead to the old and alive to the new. Number two will be we're dead to the law and alive to faith. Number three will be we're dead to self and alive to God. Number four will be we're dead to sin and alive to righteousness. Number five will be we're dead to the world and alive to the kingdom. These are things we need to look into the word of God tonight and take a look at the facts and consider this to be true because God says it is. Amen. First, we are dead to the old and alive to the new. Remember verse four once again? He says... Let's start back in verse 3 because I want you to see he wants you to know. He says, or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? The Apostle Paul is not being sarcastic. He is literally saying you may not know. You may be ignorant to the facts. So he wants them to have the facts, okay? And he says in verse 4, Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. 
One of the biggest hang-ups for Christians is believing that they are someone who has already died. You remember the old song, The Old Man is Dead? The Old Man is Dead. You need to consider this. You need to reckon yourself to be dead, that who you were before Christ died when you came to Christ. And consider that who you are now is new. Right? You are dead to the old man and alive to the new. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, I realize, just like the old man's dead, that song there says, I may wear the same old clothes, right? And even have the same old name. I realize that I may have the same name. I may have the same body, even. But I am not this body. I am spirit. I have been created in the image of God. And when I was born into this world, I was born a creation that was separated from God. It was dead in my sin. But when I came to Christ, that old man died. All of his sins was dealt with in Christ's body on that cross. Amen. And when I came to Christ, that man was what died. And God caused me to be spiritually born again. To come to life. You remember Ephesians uh, uh, 210 that we love so much that BBS was about, right? It says that we, are, we have been created anew in Christ Jesus for good works, which he planned out long ago that we might walk in them. We've been created anew. I am a new man. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, this is a big deal. This is the kind of stuff that when it first hit me, I started shouting at church and y'all would have probably kicked me out. I started dancing around when they were singing songs like, feels like I'm born again. I was going, yes. Hallelujah. Right? Because the man who had done all those evil things is dead. And when I looked in the mirror, God was saying to me, son, I don't want you to look and think that you see that old man anymore. He's dead and you're a new man. Amen. Consider that. Look at the facts. Look what God has done in Christ and look what he says in his word because that's where the facts are and consider your old man dead and now you're a new man. Dead to the old and alive to the new. That's one of the reasons I love baptism and I love doing them because it is an illustration of that. That old man's going under that water, dying and being buried with Christ. You're coming up a new man, washed clean in Christ Jesus. Next, we are dead to the law and alive to faith. The Bible says in Galatians 2, 19 through 21, it says, For I, through the law, died to the law, that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. You see... Once, before Christ, the Apostle Paul lived by the law. He was trying to perform all of the commandments and all of the, all of the things that the law said to do in order to have righteousness with God. But he said, when my eyes got opened up to the gospel, when I saw the grace of God in Christ Jesus, I realized that I could never measure up on my own. And so I died to trying to keep the law to have righteousness. And I began to live. By faith, by depending on Jesus' righteousness, by depending on what he has done, by depending on his grace. He said, I don't set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could come through the law, then Christ died for no reason. Amen? He says, no, I depend upon the grace. And I'm living my life now not trying to measure up in my own strength according to the law, but I'm living through trusting in Jesus and depending upon his grace. Dead to the law. Alive to faith. Remember in Romans 6, 4 once again. It says, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so we also should walk in a newness of life. So 
We are raised up in this new life. We, 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 are, we are brought to life by grace, by the glory of the Father. Amen. It is the Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus. That's the glory of the Father that raised him to life. It is that same glory, Christ in me, the hope of glory that is living inside of me and is raising me up in this new life. It's not my efforts or striving according to the law. It is the glory of God at work inside of me. He is the one doing the work just like he is the one who did the work to raise Jesus from the dead. So I'm that dead to trying to do it in my own strength. And I'm living by faith in Jesus. Making sense to you? Amen. Hallelujah. Consider this. Next, we're dead to self and alive to God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, For the love of Christ compels us. Because we judge thus. That word judge, by the way, could also be translated consider. We consider this. We are, we are determining this based upon a judgment by looking at something and reasoning. We judge thus that if one, Jesus, died for all, then all died. And he died for all that, here's the reason, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Listen, this is, this is foundational. This is elementary for the faith, right? I, I'm amazed at how many people are going to churches every Sunday and do not realize that it's not about them. Mm -hmm. that, that when they came to Christ, they died to themselves. And the only reason we exist, the true reason for us being created, especially a new in Christ, is to worship God. It is to live, not for ourselves, but to live for God. I don't know if you've ever seen the documentary or movie, uh, Tortured for Christ. But there's this scene in the movie. I want to go back and watch this again. I haven't watched it in a long time. There's a scene in the movie that completely blows me away. This, uh, th this new convert had, had, had uh, gotten saved. I can't even remember what country they were, they were in. I need to go watch this movie. It's so good. I want to say it might be Russia. But uh, they were getting persecuted to the degree of being killed for, for faith, okay? So they were having to have church underground, okay? And this, this guy gets saved. He hadn't been saved no time. And he signs up for a mission to carry Bibles into a territory to where you will absolutely lose your life immediately if you're caught with a Bible. And, and, and the pastor whom he got saved under, he, he loves this man. He does not, he knows his life is going to be at risk. He doesn't, he doesn't want him to die. And, and he's, he's reasoning with the man before he gets on the train with the Bibles to take them. He said, hey, do you, do you realize what this could mean? And the guy looks at him and he's just like, this is what I signed up for. Like this was, when I came to Christ, I died. Like I, I'm amazed at how people in other countries get that immediately when they come into the gospel. But people in, in, in America, you have to convince them that they're dead. You have to like try to talk them into laying down their life even though they've been going to church for a long time. No, we need to consider this. The fact is that we died to ourselves and we are only living for God and because of God. Amen? Dead to self, alive to God. Dead to sin, alive to righteousness. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24, it says, Who himself, Jesus, bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that... Here's the reason. That we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness. Having died to sins, might live for righteousness. You better believe that God did not send the precious, beloved, one and only Son of God to die on that tree so that we could live for sin. Right? You remember what he said in, in Romans chapter 6? He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? You see, when we repented and believed on Christ, we repented from sin. We died to it. We said, I am dead to sinning. I do not desire living for myself or living for sin. I am coming up under the lordship of Christ, the rule and reign of God in my life. Righteousness. 
So I died to sin and I'm alive to righteousness. Romans chapter 6 will go on to tell you that we're actually slaves of righteousness now. That before Christ, we were slaves of sin and couldn't do anything but sin. Right? Try hard as you want to, but apart from Christ, you're going to be a sinner, right? But now because of Christ and because we died, we join him in his death on the cross and we've been raised with him, we are now alive to righteousness. God has given us a new heart with new desires and the power by his Holy Spirit to walk in a new life, a life of righteousness. Now, do we still sin? Yes. Yes. But the Bible says he who practices righteousness is righteous. Right? If you have, you have joined Jesus in his death and you've died to sin and you've been raised to a new life, you have a heart that desires righteousness. You want to live right by God. Okay? And you are, you know, you might go down swinging sometimes, but you're swinging at that time. You're trying to hit the mark depending upon the grace of God and his power at work in your life. Amen? You're, you're living for righteousness. Romans 6, 11 through 13 again, it says, Likewise, you also reckon or consider yourselves, consider this, to be dead indeed. I like how it says that, to be dead indeed. The word indeed means truly. To be dead indeed to sin, truly dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So because we died to sin and we have presented ourselves to God, we are presenting now all of who we are for righteousness. Right? Now my mind, my body, my soul, all that I am is not presented anymore to sin. It has been presented to God for righteousness. Amen? Consider this. Reckon yourself to be truly dead to sin and alive to righteousness. Listen, it's like I said before, church, as a man thinks in his heart so easy, if you believe it, you will be living it, okay? You've got to consider yourself dead to sin and alive to righteousness. That's got to be how you see who you are. And if you will believe this way, if you will exercise faith in the truth, consider the facts, you will begin to see righteousness lived out in your life. Amen? Amen. All right, now we're dead to the world and alive to the kingdom. I'm going to turn here. You don't have to real quick. I didn't put this in the notes, but I thought later this was just a, too good of a verse not to, to leave out. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, uh, verse 1 through 3, it says, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind on the things above, not on the things on the earth. For or because. Why am I going to set my mind above and not on the earth? Because you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. See, because I have died to my sin and just living for myself and what this world has to offer, now my mindset is from the kingdom of God and God's perspective and God's desires being His kingdom. Amen? He is about His kingdom come and His will being done on the earth as it is in heaven. And that happens through us as we die to living for the world and we live to the kingdom of God. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And that's what Colossians is telling us. Look, don't set your mind now on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Right? That's what's in the world. You've been born now from above. Amen? Born again into the kingdom of God. It says, And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God 
abides forever. See, do you know how you can go through suffering in this world and you can go through loss and pain and, and, and you, can, you can go through life not trying to, to be the head honcho and, and have the biggest house and the nicest cars and the nicest things, yet you can live a life to where you pour out what you have to others and you spend yourself for others. You know how you can do that? It's because you know your riches are in heaven. You know that there's something more than this temporary world. You have considered this. That if you lay up treasures on earth, moth and rust will destroy them. But if you lay up treasures in the kingdom, neither moths, neither moth nor rust can ever destroy them. Right? They'll be there forever. You have considered something. You've considered the facts, and you're living from a different perspective. You're dead to the world and alive to the kingdom of God. In Galatians 6, 14, the Apostle Paul makes an incredible statement. He says, As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. So what is the motive? What is the motive to, to set your mind on things above instead of the earth? It is the cross it is the cross of Christ that we are daily waking up and looking to and realizing that Jesus gave it all. That he literally forfeited everything that he had in the kingdom of God and humbled himself and became a man, even became a bond servant of men, became obedient to God to the point of death on the cross for you. When you keep your eyes right there because of what you're looking at, you will begin to lose your interest in living for this world. And you will begin to want to live for the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33 says, see first. Come on, this is priorities. All right? This matters. See first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, what are these things? These things that you need to survive in your temporary earthly bodies and existence, these things will be added to you. Why? Because your heavenly Father knows what you need. Amen? Come on. He cares for the sparrow. Sparrow, Surely he'll care for you. Right? You are of much more value than birds. Right? The Father knows what you need before you even ask him. Mm -hmm. These are things that consume the minds of those who don't consider the fact that they have a heavenly but those who have considered this, that the God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills, that he shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God knows what you need. You can die to the world and put in that first, and you can seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Last, I want to talk about how when we, when we die, we are dead to live forever. We are dead to live forever. Isn't it crazy? The way into the kingdom is dead. Right? You have to die to live. Right? You die to live. And once you choose to die to uh, the old, to die to the law, to die to self, to die to sin, to die to the world, and you enter into this relationship and fellowship with God in this new life. This new life is eternal. It is everlasting. Jesus said in John 5, 24, I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into Life. Listen, I'm already dead and alive forever. I've already died when I came to Jesus, and now I'm alive forever. Listen, you can't kill me. Somebody can come in here right now and shoot this church up, and they might could, they might could cause this earthly heart to quit pumping, but I'm going to live right on forever. Never miss a beat. To be absent from this earthly body is to be the presence with you of my Lord forever. Consider this, right? 
think this way. The Apostle Paul said, for, for, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He said, it is far better to depart and be with him. I consider myself today already dead and already alive forever in Christ. He said in John eleven twenty five 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Have you considered this? 2 Timothy 2.11 says this is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. So here's my question for us in closing. Have you died? Have you died? You see, the Bible says in Romans 6, 7, it says, He who has died has been freed from sin. Have you died? Now, you can make the argument that we die daily. Amen. Uh, Jesus, in one translation of uh, take up your cross and follow me, it says do it daily. The Apostle Paul said, I die daily. Okay? So every day we're choosing to do these things, to die to the old, live to the new, die to the law, live to faith, die to self, alive to God, dead to sin, alive to righteousness, dead to the world, alive to the kingdom. We are making these choices daily. But listen, there is an initial big time decision within the heart that says I'm done. I'm done. I'm dead. I'm dead to myself. When this happens, that is when you truly live. The Bible says, Jesus said, he said, if you cling to your life, you'll lose it. If you lay it down, you'll keep it forever. You'll find it. So many times, I am working with guys, and I once was one of them one time. And they want their situation to change. They want their families back. They want to see their kids. They want restoration and some of the things that they lost in this world. They just want to have a decent life again, have a job again, and be able to pay their bills. And they're so focused on that, they're even praying to God for it. But many times, they're coming to God for what He can do for them instead of dying to, their self, to themselves and finding their life in God alone. And because they're clinging to what they want, because they're clinging to that wife they want back or that child they want to see or that job that they want or that house that they want or this, that, and the other, because that is the number one thing that they're seeking first, they're missing out on the life that is in Christ Jesus. If you cling to it, you're going to lose it. But if you lay it down, you'll find it. What happened when Abraham was willing to lay his Isaac down? He kept him. He kept him. You know what happened when I finally told God, even though I loved Jenna and Braden so much, and I wanted them back, I didn't get them back until I said, God, even if I never see them again, I just want you. That is when I laid my life down, and I got to keep it forever. Have you died? Next, if you have died in here, if you have been truly saved, you've really given it all up. Listen, I want to ask you this question. Do you consider yourself to be dead? Indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Do you view yourself this way? It's how God views you. It's how God sees you. It is the facts about who you are and what has happened to you in Christ. Right? So we should consider this. We should reckon ourselves to be dead indeed to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Amen.